Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I'm your friend Amos Chaktivel, and today we're going to see some interesting topics. Uh, and I have two special guests today with me. And uh, you all know me, but you don't know about Nathan and Ajit. Uh, Ajit and Nathan, maybe you could uh, you know introduce yourself uh, to the to the Testing Mini Bytes community, and uh, you can also get started with your presentation uh, once you're ready. I'm very curious to know uh, you know what you're going to present, and I'm really really excited to hear about it. Oh, awesome. I mean, we're really humbled to be here. And it's a pleasure to virtually meet everyone in the community at, at large. Uh, my name is Nathan. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Talk. Hi, guys. Uh, uh, hi, Amudan. Thanks for giving us the opportunity to be here. Uh, my name is Ajit. I'm the VP of Engineering at Talk. So, Nathan, like, uh, can we get started with the presentation? I'm really excited. Oh, excellent. Uh, I'm super excited too. So uh, without further ado, I'll go ahead and jump into screen share and we, we can get started. So that being said, uh, there we go. I'm, I'm in screen share. I'll jump into slideshow view. And uh, that being said, Amitan, like once again, thank you for, for hosting us. We're incredibly excited uh, for today because essentially what we want to cover is that we want to introduce a topic of Expresso in the context of an Appium test engineer. In other words, you at, at this point, you know, if you're following Amitan's content, you know, understand Java, you understand how to use the Appium Java client, uh, but now we want to sort of uh, take you to the next level. In other words, like now that you sort of uh, have this skill set, uh, apply it to learning how to use Expresso. Uh, so with that being said, let me set the agenda for this particular meeting. So first, we want to introduce what we do at Talk. Uh, it'll help you set, set, it'll help us set the stage in terms of uh, why we're passionate about uh, the, the testing space as a whole. Uh, from there, we'll, we'll go ahead and compare and contrast Appium and Expresso. Uh, and then from there, we'll actually teach you uh, hands-on how to actually write tests in Expresso. Uh, so with that being said, I think the problem statement here unifies everyone in the sense that I think we can all relate to this. In other words, application testing, it's essential, it's critical, but also very complex. It's an ongoing process. So first and foremost, you need to have tests. The absence of tests will cause issues in post-release and causes bad customer experiences. Second, uh, end the day, setting up automation test frameworks, it's time consuming. And on top of that, too, is that it involves actually a lot of specialization if you want to create uh, custom tools for your environment. Uh, and last but not least, it begs the question, what do you do when your test suite fails? Um, so handling issues in a systematic manner, uh, that's a very complex topic of its own. So essentially what we've done at Talk is that uh, we've actually built a platform to simplify all of this. Essentially, it helps you easily track, catch, and resolve issues that occur in your automation tests. Uh, so that being said, when we started the company, we took a first principles approach. So we started from square zero, which is essentially building packages for um, mobile and web uh, test automation frameworks. From there, we built our beautiful front end. It's a SaaS platform. And as you execute tests, the data gets sent over to our platform. And from there, we generate these really clean and beautiful reports. And from these reports, it's very easy to understand what was the issue. So then you can take action to fix it. And then as you fix things, we have integrations into tools that companies know and love. So for example, workflow actions into tools like GitHub and Slack, just to name a few. So with that being said, in terms of framework support. Just a, oh, just yes. a minute, Nathan. I um, think I'm going to learn two, two different things today. One is uh, the Espresso itself and then uh, talk. So I'm really, really excited for the topic. Yeah, please go ahead. Oh, excellent. Yeah, between both of those, there's a lot of uh, really cool knowledge. So in terms of Expresso, just as like an API for expressing like, uh, like functional automation tests, but also as a platform, we have a lot of really cool features in terms of like uh, yeah. team integration, like et cetera. Um, but yeah. with that being said, in terms of our framework support today, um, so uh, we actually started with building our packages for Python uh, and JavaScript and TypeScript for Appium and Selenium. You can uh, fetch those from the respective package managers, so PyPy as well as NPM. And then from there, we also tackled native frameworks. So for example, today's topic, as my colleague Ajith will uh, be going into, is actually uh, Expresso in the context of Android native tests. And we've also recently released uh, XE test package native for iOS, so for Swift developers who use Xcode. So that being said, uh, using our platform is actually simple. So it's really just a three-step process. So the first thing that you do is that when you uh, create an account on talk.com, you will first create a project. Uh, from there, you'll just simply download the package into your automation uh, test code. And then from there, as you execute your tests, the reports are automatically created for you. Like no coding, no additional like work needed there for you to use the platform and to access the reports. 
So that being said, uh, I like to sort of pose a hypothetical question. And the hypothetical question is, why learn Espresso? So if you've been following uh, testing mini bytes, like you already know Appium, you know Selenium. So in other words, if you can automate uh, like uh, sort of Android apps as well as uh, hybrid apps and web applications. Uh, but that being said, uh, by the end of this uh, discussion, I think you'll be convinced that it's really important to know Espresso. And here are just three of many reasons why. So first and foremost, if you know Espresso, you get the opportunity to actually work closer with the Android developers on your team. In other words, you'll actually be able to write tests that your developers will actually run. Um, and on top of it too, you'll have a better sense of the application under test uh, in that process since you'll be committing your tests directly to the Android Studio project. Uh, second, it actually has a very concise and expressive API, um, as you'll see shortly. Um, it has also a very fast execution time. So it's really just a great tool to have in your automation toolbox, just because there might be situations where it'll come in handy for certain projects that you're working on. And last but not least, it also provides you the ability to upskill yourself by, by learning Espresso. It actually opens up the aperture in terms of job opportunities that you may be now eligible to, uh, to, to take uh, possibly as part of your career. Uh, so with that being said, let's segue into uh, comparing and contrasting Appium Expresso. And that being said, I'll hand it off to my colleague, Ajit. Thanks, Nathan. Hi, guys. Uh, um, uh, are you guys able to see my screen? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So I, I just have like a split screen view because I'm planning to um, show the slides and at the same time trying to demo the code. Um, also like at the end of it. Uh, so initially I'm planning to uh, give like an overview of Appium. Most of you guys already know what Appium is, but uh, also I would like to show Expresso and do some sort of uh, comparison. So you can see at what uh, you know scenarios uh, it makes more sense to use Appium or Espresso. Um, and at the end, I would like to show like a quick demo of like one of the sample app that we have on both Appium yeah. and Espresso, and then we can see how different they both look. Um, to start okay. off with Appium, uh, Appium is like open source tool, like all uh, most of you guys know. Um, it allows you to create uh, tests for mobile web hybrid and native applications. And uh, one of the ideas behind uh, having open source version of Appium is basically um, um, you shouldn't need any SDK or recompile your app to write test, right? So if you have any APK that you're, which is already on a device, or if it is let be a system app that you want to try something in integration with your existing app, you could always use the package name and app activity to launch it and then run the test on it. And uh, also the other beauty of Appium is it gives you support on multiple different languages. So before I get to that, uh, in order to run an Appium test on Android, um, you only need like either a Mac OS, Windows or Linux machine and Android SDK greater than 16. Yeah, so some of the benefits of uh, Appium or like some of the features that are like really good about Appium are it supports cross-platform test cases using WebDriver API. What that yeah. means is uh, you can use the same test to automate on iOS and Android. Um, sometimes you have the same application on different on both the platforms, but sometimes you have like uh, different uh, minute differences, which all can be handled one one uh, you know script file. Um, the other thing is Appium also supports multiple languages. So if the team is familiar with Java, they can just continue writing the tests in Java. And uh, behind the hood, everything is like handled by Appium's own individual drivers. Yeah. Um, it also doesn't require your application to be recompiled. So you don't need to modify or require any special permissions on your app to automate it. Um, the, uh, so, so, some of you might have already noticed that, uh, you know, Appium is a great tool, but it has certain limitations. Um, it provides a lot of flexibility in terms of how you can write your test, what frameworks that you can use. You can use any of your uh, frameworks like TestNG or JUnit, which of your choice and then build test. But at the same time, uh, uh, writing tests in Appium is a little bit tricky. So if you don't write your test, uh, uh, without a full understanding of app, it could get uh, sometimes slow or sometimes flaky. For example, if you want yeah. to like, uh, say for example, if there is a network action and do, you want to wait for something to come back and then update the UI. Um, if you're not doing the proper wait, 
um, your test could just fail. Or if you are putting like a sleep statement, that means you are just delaying your test. So it's always a good idea to like keep waiting or polling for an element uh, before and then uh, continuing the test and asserting at every level. Um, yeah. The other thing with Appium is it is a little complicated to set up initially because in order to set Appium, you need to set up a bunch of tools like uh, Android SDK, uh, you need to set up Node.js, you need to set up uh, a lot of other dependencies. I'm sure if you run like Appium Doctor, it gives you a list of all the tools that are currently set up and what's missing. So that's a super helpful tool, but then you still have to go through a lot of setup. And sometimes you could run into tricky situations where your version of OS has something, uh, you know, which is incompatible and, uh, you know, it could yeah. be breaking things or something might be conflicting it. Um, yeah. That's pretty much about, uh, you know, basic uh, knowledge of Appium. So I would like to switch gears to Espresso now. Um, so Espresso is like a native framework for writing fast and reliable Android tests. And it's provided by Google themselves. It's more developer focused. So you, if you have a good understanding of your app, you can deeply integrate with it and write uh, super fast uh, tests on it. Um, it lets you leave the whole process of wait, sinks, and sleep because Espresso knows about the UI. So it knows when the UI is doing something. It knows if there is a background thread is happening. You can also figure out if there is a network request happening and you don't have to put this condition specifically. Say for example, in comparison with Appium, you'll have to write uh, explicit weight, or sometimes it might be easy to just put an implicit weight because it's gonna keep retrying until it finds an element. But at Espresso, it's uh, not required at all. It automatically handles a lot of this for you. And I'll get to that uh, with idling resources, which shows like the true power of Espresso. Okay. Um, moving on to the next slide. Uh, so basically just to give like a quick overview. So each time your test invokes uh, on view method, Espresso will wait for the following synchronization conditions. So it will wait for the UI message queue to be empty before it maybe like before you perform a click action on an element or you look for an element or then it will wait for any, it will wait to check if there is any existing instances of async tasks that are currently being executed. It will automatically wait for it to complete. And uh, any custom idling resources that you have defined, um, it, Espresso will automatically wait for all those to be complete before it performs an action. So this is like a big difference compared to Appium where you'll have to individually handle all of these cases. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the other thing from Espresso is it, since it's built just for Android, um, it only supports Java and Kotlin. So you don't get the flexibility of writing a, Java, a test in Python or JavaScript. So it has to be written in Java or Kotlin. And also there is no cross-platform support. It just, it's only for Android. So in certain cases, it makes sense to use Appium, but in certain other cases, uh, Espresso might be better. So there is no better tool uh, you cannot say Espresso is better than Appium or Appium is better than Espresso, but it all depends on the scenario and the, the situation of what you want to achieve. Yeah. Uh, so to go over into like uh, some of the components within Espresso. So Espresso, the main entry point is like the Espresso uh, uh, is the view. You have on view and on data method. And plus you have uh, things that are not related to the view, like pressing the back button and things like that. Um, the next thing is the view matches. Um, I'll get into detail. Uh, so on the right-hand side, you can actually see a sample test. Um, yeah. So this is written in Espresso. Um, it's in Kotlin. So if, if you are finding the syntax slightly different, that's the re slightly different from Java, that is the reason. Um, so going into the test, you can see like every test you actually look for a view, you query Ajit, for a view. Just a minute, I, I, Ajit, uh, just a minute. Can you zoom zoom your font sure. a little bit because it's small, very small to view, yeah. Uh, is it better now? Yeah, it is better, yeah. Okay, yeah. So um, as you can see, um, Espresso has view matches. That's the first thing that you would do. Like you would want to find yeah. a view within your view hierarchy and then perform an action on it and then assert for it. 
So that's view matches. And then the second thing, like I said, it's the actions that you perform, such as once you find a view, what do you want to do it? Let's say you find a button, then you can like click on it. Or if it's a view, you can scroll on it. So that th those fall into the action section. And lastly, you would want to like assert for some things. So let's say you want to see if the text is actually displayed on the screen. So you can use the assertion, view assertions to check that and verify it. So to give a quick, uh, Example, you can just look at uh, the statement over here where it's actually looking for a view with a text uh, which has open price of the day. Um, I'll go into the app shortly to show you a small demo. And then it is actually yep. checking if that element is displayed on the screen. Um, I'll also show you like a comparison of the same script on Appium, how you would typically write it in Appium. And uh, the test yep. that I have currently is in Python. So if, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a little different from the Java experience. Yeah. Um, okay. So before I go on to the demo section, I would like to like talk a little more about Espresso, um, the idling resources that I spoke about earlier. Um, mm -hmm. Essentially, you would want to use, uh, this is a standard thing provided in Espresso. You would want to use an idling resource when you are loading data from the internet. Let's say you have an API call and then you get the response back and you update the UI. So at that time, you can actually integrate it with the uh, uh, idling resource so that Espresso knows that the API is done and it's ready to perform the action on the UI. Or you're trying to establish like a database connection or you're trying to manage services like a system service or an instance of intent service, or yeah. even if you are like performing some complex business logic such as so bitmap transformation. So those are like uh, operations that take time. So with Appium, what happens is the moment you fire the query, it's going to look for the element. But then here, it's going to wait for all of these things and then continue, which is what uh, enables you to write more stable tests compared to Appium. So that's about it from the talk point of view in terms of Expresso. So I just want to also go to the demo section. So as you can see here, uh, I hope the screen is uh, large enough. Uh, so this is a standard J unit. You can, test. Ajit, you can, you, can uh, you know, just make the, uh, you know, in the is background, you can put the PPT in the background. Yeah. 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 This sorry. is now better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me. Okay. Yeah. So this is a standard J unit test and I have a demo app, uh, which is basically, you know, querying for a stock and then displaying mm -hmm. the current value. So okay. if you notice the app, uh, the moment I hit the fetch button, there is a network request, which goes to the open API and fetches the current value. And then once the request comes back, it updates this value. So, okay. Let me try closing this and doing that again. So by default, you can see that those elements are not yet visible on the screen. So it's only going to yeah. appear once the results have been fetched from the network. So I have a basic test uh, with setup and teardown. Uh, setup is going to be executed mm -hmm. at the beginning and then teardown at the end of the test. And all I'm doing here is I'm registering my idling resource. So this is like a counting idling resource, which is specific to your network calls. So every time your yeah. app makes a network call, it's going to increment a counter, which is managed with an espresso. And then uh, it will only perform that action when that counter is back to zero. Okay. Uh, and then uh, in order to go through the test case, it's basically pretty straightforward. It's just getting an app context asserting if you are the right app package. This is just a sample app on the right side that you're seeing. Yeah. Um, as you can see, like the first thing is I'm just uh, pressing on the stocks button and then it goes to the drop down list, um, selects yeah. the stock and then gets the result. So let me yeah. show you an execution of how this actually works. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to try and execute this. So this is going to actually build the Gradle project, uh, push the APK mm -hmm. to the device, and then run the app, uh, Espresso test. Yeah. 
So as you can see, it's just uh, taking some time to build and uh, push it to the emulator and you see the test is like done. So um, okay. in this file, I have two test cases. So the first one is to verify that, you know, if I select Tesla, it shows the value. And the second one is intentionally made to fail. So we can also show a fail scenario. So it's only yeah. checking if, if there is a Facebook stock in the dropdown. So it's a very simple test. So that's the yeah. reason you're seeing that the build failed. Uh, yeah. Now, in order to integrate, so this is how you would typically run an Espresso test. Now, I would like yeah. to show you how to add talk into your Espresso test and also get all the data regarding the test. Uh, what I would want okay. to show is like, it's super easy to just add talk into your test cases. So let me go to the repository. Um, the talk Android li Espresso library is actually open source and you can go to uh, the GitHub page of talk and you can find it right there. Um, the yeah. descriptions actually specify uh, exactly how to use the package. Um, okay. So basically in your uh, depend uh, in your Gradle file, you would specify talk as your dependency, which is the first step. So if I go to yeah, my yeah. build.gradle file, since I'm running it locally, I'm just specifying the local library, but ideally this is a Maven project. So you can just specify uh, the package yeah. name and the version. Yeah. And all you have to do in order to enable talk is basically uh, add this one rule. It's a JUnit rule. Okay. Which will enable you to... Um, which will basically invoke talk and it will give it uh, power to the life cycle of your test. So it can yeah. extract all the data. Uh, yeah. In order to initialize talk, you need two parameters. That is your API token and your project ID. So there are multiple ways okay. in which you can pass those values. Um, so you can either okay. pass it as an argument to talk watcher because uh, sometimes things are hard coded, you might want to just run it on one project. So you can just pass uh, directly as an argument over here. Or if you're planning to yep. run it from a CI CD point of view, there are multiple other ways to run it. So let's say uh, you already have the test APK within the uh, device. So you can actually invoke it through ADB instruments and yep. you can provide an environment variable specifying the top project ID and then the API token. So this would be the yep. command that you would typically use to invoke uh, the test directly from the device. And uh, this would only work if you have your APK already on the device. Now, if you are running it from a uh, CI CD point of view and you have a Gradle project and you want to run it from Gradle, you can use yep. a Gradle task called connected Android test. Um, and this is how you would be providing the project ID and the uh, API token. It's basically Gradle connected Android test, and then you specify the arguments. Or if you also want to specify in your Gradle build.config, you could also do it directly by adding it as a test instrument instrumentation runner argument. Yeah. So these are the three different ways you can do. So all you have to do is add those and then enable this rule. And one other thing that you have to ensure, which is uh, give the permission to enable internet within your app. Um, this most of the times is already there because your app is, you know, making other what? HTTP calls. So most of the times yeah, you don't have yeah. to worry about it, but if it's an app, which doesn't deal with any network requests, you might have to add this to your app. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the only reason you need this is because all the data collected from this library is sent back to the talk server using HTTP. Okay. Uh, and once you have all these enabled, you can just uh, invoke your test as usual. It's just one line of code and, and, and then a dependency configuration. Is that all, right. right? Right, right. Yeah, it's super easy. You just have, you don't have to change any test or make any behavior change. You just add one rule. Yeah. Okay, so as we saw, it just executed the test and I want to show you how it would look like uh, in the talk dashboard. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I have the dashboard over, open over here. So this is a project that I created to collect all the test results from here. So I'm going to just refresh this page. 
And you can see uh, the latest test that I ran is showing as a few seconds ago. So we have two test cases. Uh, Ajit, can you can you make it as a full screen? Oh yeah, sure. You can you can make it as a full screen. Maybe we can minimize that later. But yeah. Sure. Um, is it large yeah. enough to see the text? The text are still very small. People might be watching in their mobiles, so it's better to uh, zoom it a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As I walk through, I'll just zoom in what I'm uh, specifying. Yeah. So as you can see here, it, uh, you know, just by using that one line of code, it has already collected your test name and okay. all the details about the test. You have the okay. platform, you have the uh, version of your Android type of automation mm -hmm. and what time you run the test. Now let's look into a past case. So now if I open this test, you can see on the top that it has a bunch of tags, which are basically information related to your environment and device. So you have the SDK version, yeah. you have the model of the device that you used, package name of the app, uh, platform name is Android, automation type, manufacturer, and file name. So file name is basically where you wrote your espresso test. It, it was gonna yeah. collect it and automatically populate it over here. And yeah. it also takes a screenshot at the end of your test just to give you an okay. uh, idea of what the test looks like. You could okay. also get the view hierarchy at this point. So there is a launch inspector button, which will like, roughly show you the view hierarchy. Okay. And uh, yeah, and then the logs. So uh, the main thing I want to focus over here is like you already have the test execution time and everything yeah. is presented to you in the dashboard. So as you can okay. see, it's only took 1.81 seconds. Okay. Now I want to compare the exact same test case on Appium on Python. So if I go to a Python uh, project. Okay. So this is what I would be doing. So once you initialize Appium, you need to have an Appium server running. You need to specify yeah. your desired capabilities. I've just specified the yeah. same simulator, um, local host, and then I'm initializing the same talk project using the talk Python library. You specify your okay. API token and project ID. And yeah. as you can see, uh, every place I'll have to use this web driver wait, which is explicit yeah. wait in order to locate elements. And uh, when I, every time I change the activity or move to a different screen or perform a network request, I have to again use the web driver wait. So this is doing the okay. exact same step, checking if the element is visible. Another thing to notice is uh, when using Appium, sometimes you don't have any proper identifiers. Sometimes there might not be IDs. So for this case, I have to use XPath in order to locate the yeah. element. So XPath queries are slower compared to finding from using IDs. So yeah. um, the exact same test when I run, run it on uh, Appium, it's, uh, I have a report over here, which I can show you. Yeah. Um, it's got the same details and uh, instead of the device logs, it's gonna show you the Appium server logs and you can see it took about mm -hmm. nine seconds to run the same test. So, which is like a huge difference yeah. from 1.7 yeah. seconds to 9.3 seconds. Yeah. Uh, the main reason being that, uh, you know, Espresso, you have complete handle of all the identifiers. As you can see, I'm directly yeah. referencing the stocks button from the app yeah. itself. So if something changes on the app, um, it also means that it will show an error on your test. That way you can like manage your test better. You don't have to again, run your Appium test, realize that, you know, uh, things are broken and then you have to again fix it and write it, right? So here it's all connected directly within your application. And yeah. uh, whoever is uh, building a new version of your app can ensure that, you know, even the tests are actually, uh, you know, passing before you can push it to the next environment. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much about like a comparison between a simple Appium test on Stocks application, which you just saw versus an Espresso uh, test. Yeah. Ajit, I'm more curious about the reports. Can you go to the reports dashboard? I want to see what are the logs that, you know, it captured and all that. Sure. Um, yeah. So let me go back to the espresso test. Yeah. So Nathan, do you want to run through the dashboard? 
Oh yeah, def uh, definitely. Um, so uh, that being said, to kind of talk through uh, what, we're, what we're seeing on the screen is that what was really awesome is that this report was automatically generated for us. Um, so okay. as you saw, simply at like add the package uh, into uh, your Gradle file, and this got automatically generated. And um, that being said, to kind of enumerate through everything that we see on the screen here. So on the top right hand side, uh, as my colleague pointed out, that was the test execution time. So what's really uh, great about this, this is precisely how long it, it took. So in the case for an Appium test, uh, it's actually just the test runtime. It's not including, for example, the driver like like setup and all, and, and sort of uh, other things that add to, to the time. This is just uh, simply put, just the time that your, your uh, test took to execute. Uh, if we sort of a turn of our attention to the tag section, these are properties that were automatically generated. So the, the platform is intelligent to automatically pick up on certain attributes. So for example, that this was an Android test, because this was run against a yeah. device, we can see the manufacturer was uh, Google uh, and so on and so forth. So for example, health information like the SDK version. Uh, from there is that uh, the, the talk back, which also take a screenshot snapshot, which is very handy when a failure, failure occurs, uh, because we'll actually give you a side-by-side yes. -side visual diff. Um, and that being yeah. said, we also have a built-in browser review inspector, as my colleague uh, demonstrated, which is super handy because every now and then uh, it, it, you have to sort of figure out what is the right selector strategy to use. Um, so uh, it, it gives you the opportunity to, to do that. Uh, and that being said, mm -hmm. from there, uh, we have a wealth of other features. So because this test passed, uh, we can see, for example, uh, the logs. But in the event that fa failure occurs, there's like other options that you'll uh, see on the screen as well. Um, so, for example, yeah. as you can see here, we'll actually fetch what, what was a relevant error as well as what was the line number that that failure occurred. So it's very easy to switch yeah. back into your code editor uh, and resolve the issue. And then on top of it, too, we'll also fetch uh, the logs uh, that were close to the time of failure. Uh, so what's really nice is that you don't have to sift through all the standard output or all these like verbose logging on Jenkins. Everything is really yes. consolidated, it's there. And then for example, if we just type in something, uh, for example, in, in the search bar there, it's also indexed as well. So it's very, very fast to query this on the front end. So for example, if we just type in Google, just as, as a arbitrary example, as you can see, it just slices through and I was yeah. able to get directly to that uh, logcat message, message that, that I actually wanted in this test as well. So long story short, um, like a very clean report, straight to the point, concise, and uh, if the issue occurs, like in this particular report, we'll tell you, in fact, what was yeah. the issue and where to go to. Yeah. And now that, like, is, it, is there any way that they could see uh, the history of reports, like what happened, uh, you know, any, any kind of diagrams that can clearly represent, like, how my test performed in the last month and how it is performing now, right? So, you know, is there any way that I could see the, something like that? Oh, yes, like that, that's a really great question. So uh, uh, actually we have multiple views of answering that question. Um, I'll start with the most uh, basic one. So if we press the back button actually from uh, this particular- uh, uh, Nathan, is it, uh, should I just give you the control so you can demo it much more? Oh. <laughs> actually, that, like uh, that's a really good point. Uh, like uh, I, I, I can go ahead and jump jump into screen share actually. Uh, actually, yeah, thank you. That's, that's a very good point. Uh, so that being said, I, I went ahead and I jumped into screen share. And actually, um, I just want to confirm if you can see my screen, okay? Yeah, yeah. Oh, excellent. Perfect. So, um, you know, uh, j just as an example here. So, for example, if I jump into this particular project that I, that I have that I have in my account. Uh, so to answer your first question, yes. So we have a feature called Benchmark Trends. For example, if I click on this, as you can see, I can see it's actually plotting out the runtime of, of, of my tests over time. Just because in the day, even if your test passes, it begs the question is it was it optimal um so what's nice is that like as you make fixes like as you can see like i made a fix actually like after march 16th and we can see that after i improved the test we can see that it took less time to run the same test uh, so that's like uh, definitely a huge win in terms of efficiency uh even if tests uh fail we have this really uh, slick unified issues view um so essentially across all your projects it's the aggregate of essentially what are the outstanding issues in other words uh if you're a test automation engineers what fires do I need to fight? What haven't I, I, I fixed at this moment of time? Um, so those are two easy ways to get insights to answer your question. Yeah, yeah. This makes more sense. Like what sort of other integrations that talk platform has? Like you know, if I want to send uh, um, in a, you know, message to a Slack channel, you know, something like that. So uh, because we in our company, we, we have Slack and we want the reports to be in the Slack. So do we have to write an extra code or is, is talk can handle this? 
Oh, yes. Um, like, so um, that's actually a really great question. So we have um, built in integrations in the platform and this list is uh, expanding as well in the sense that, uh, but in terms of like what we have to start off with is that we actually have a Slack integration natively in the platform. So for example, if you enable this, you'll actually see a new option where you can actually configure on a per project basis, what Slack okay. channel to notify in the event of a failure. So it's, it's quite customizable. Um, so that's Slack integration in a nutshell. Well, we also have GitHub mm -hmm. integration. So what's great about GitHub integration is that if a test fails, um, you will actually fetch what are the most recent commits. So there'll be a really cool floating action card in your test report uh, that links to the GitHub repo uh, with the most recent commits and who committed it. So that way there's attribution. So in other words, if a test fails, you at least know who was the last person to touch it and what change did they, did they make? Um, so that's like a, that being said, in terms of roadmap, we're um, sort of, uh, we have plans for adding other integrations, but hey, I would say this is a great start. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I think uh, the way you fetch the commit message, uh, what is the commit that causes the issue, that will give uh, an easy idea to the developer uh, so they, they can easily fix them out. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes, I, I completely agree. Um, and um, like uh, that, that being said, like, um, you know, just use, using the platform in general, it's, it's a very intuitive experience, like from, from just an enterprise SaaS platform perspective. So long story short, super easy to create a team, manage teams. It's very easy to manage your settings as well. You can even like link your account to uh, Google single sign-on. Uh, and then uh, last but not least, um, in terms of uh, projects, everything's organized for you. So as you can see, you know, simply create projects, uh, simply run tests like my colleague showcase. And as you run, we'll actually grade them. So as you can see, there's a health score. So you have a sense of essentially, what do I need to sort of focus my attention on? Like what suites are particularly flaky? And then when you jump yeah. into it, just very clear breakdown of tests that have passed, that have failed. Uh, we even go beyond that. So for example, as a developer, you can actually exclude tests. So you, you don't have to necessarily like coordinate with your DevOps team for your CI CD service. You can actually just exclude yeah. tests within code actually. Uh, and yeah. uh, also on top of it too, when tests have failed, but then they have passed afterwards, that gets tracked separately as resolved. So you have the sense of essentially the progress that's being, that's being made. Uh, and then um, last but not least, uh, with the sort of, uh, in the spirit of sort of uh, team collaboration, it's also very easy to reassign issues to someone on your team and they'll actually get a notification um, and then they'll, ha they'll have a direct access to the same test report as well. Okay, that's that sounds good. Is there anything else uh, uh, that you want to showcase, uh, Nathan and uh, Ajit? Uh, actually, this is perfect. Um, like, uh, uh, this is essentially uh, all of the aspects that we want to to showcase. Just just to recap, um, showcasing uh, the platform, but also um, how to use Expresso, particularly for example, if you're you know familiar with app, you're familiar with like automation, uh, but you've been sort of curious and learning how to uh, to, to use Expresso and how to contribute to uh, Expresso tests potentially. Yeah. Like, like uh, uh, I guess add your company like on your team. Uh, that being said, too, uh, we really appreciate uh, your uh, for the opportunity you've given us, uh, Amathon, for for hosting us. Um, you, you've built an amazing community, um, so we're just very grateful for this experience. Yeah, yeah. Even uh, we are very glad as well. Uh, testing mini bikes is, is very happy as well to host uh, some some kind of webinar like this because uh, I know APM really well, but I haven't tried Expresso so far. But I think this is the right opportunity or a kicking. Uh, kick in the back for me to learn Expresso and I definitely love to uh, touch with uh, talk because uh, is this some of the two I have seen a lot of reporting tools but uh, talk is something different it has uh, a clear vision what it has to demonstrate uh, for example uh, the slack integration github github commits and then one a single sign on uh, you know for your uh, uh, Google account is, is something that's really easy. That's going to make our life easy. Like we don't have to spend a lot of time, you know, managing all these uh, reporting tools and CACD servers and all that. So it's really, really cool. I, I, I'm really glad that you guys could spend some time on this uh, day and demonstrate about this. Thank you guys. Um, I think uh, testing many ways, uh, uh, people will, will, will definitely, uh, you know, uh, reach out to you uh, if they have some doubts so uh, you know i'm sure uh, you'll agree this tool will reach great heights i'm i'm glad to be really part of it thank you again guys you all have a very good day uh, i'll see you guys another day thank you bye bye thank you so much really appreciate thank it thank you so much bye bye